right, I've got all my edges on my, or my little gaps connected now, as you can see here on my peace sign. So the next thing we need to do is we need to draw the piece up here where we put our chain or our, or our uh, piece of yarn or whatever it is, or a zip tie to tie it off on something to put it around our neck. So we got to draw that little eyelet up there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the L command for scissor, uh, excuse me, for ellipse. Scissor was the C command. So we hit the L command for ellipse. I'm going to find that anchor point right there on the top. I'm going to hold my Alt and Shift key down, and I'm going to draw a circle. I don't know how big the circle is, but I'm going to draw it. So I'm going to fix that by changing the size over here in the parameters to 0.375, which is 3 eighths of an inch. And it just scooched it down to the size I want, and that's a good thing. So let's zoom up here on this again using my Alt key and my middle mouse button. And I'm going to click off to the side using my selection tool. Now I'm going to hit the L command again to relaunch the uh, ellipse again, Alt, Shift, and drag out. So there's another circle. Well, I want that circle to be a certain size. I want it to be an eighth of an inch so we can get string, yarn, chain, zip ties, whatever through it. So I key in 0.125. So I did that, and now I've got my circle that I want. Okay, good, but we've got to do some trimming again and cut some of this stuff out. No problem. Again hit our C command for scissor. We'll come over here to about right there. Come over here to about right there. Go back to our V key, which gets our direct, which gets our selection arrow. Click on this, delete. All right, now again, scissor tool for scissor actions here. And we'll come across here to that point there. Again, it's got the bottom part selected that I want to get rid of. So delete once, delete twice. All right, that looks pretty good. Now what we can do is we can draw a line that connects these two together and then we'll make it art. So I'll use my pen command, get the pen tool, click on this. Now watch it as it makes that anchor or like a chain right up here. See the little chain? Click on that. Come over here to this side here, click on that and it'll make it, oh look at this now. The lower right you see a circle. That means that the object is completely enclosed. That's good. So we've got a circle there. Now what we want to do is we're going to find a really cool command and we're going to rip these guys off. I'm going to hold this down and rip this uh, menu off here and it's got some of my commands here. Now I'm going to show you what makes Illustrator so amazing is I'm going to use the anchor point tool as you see on the bottom there and I'm going to link those two up here to this guy. Alright, so I've got my direct selection and my anchor. Now I can select this one and then select that one. Now notice that's got an open anchor because that was the last one I selected. If I hold my control key down it goes to a white one. That's good. So I'm going to click out here with my control key. Now I know there's a point right up here. I'm going to zoom up and if you notice there's this handle. Let me pan over here. See that handle right there? With my uh, convert anchor point tool, this guy right here, anchor point tool, I can grab this and I can play with the arc of my circle. Don't want to play with it too much. If I mess up, I do a control Z. I'll click up here again, grab these two, and I can click and drag and I can make those rounded. Now let me zoom out here a little bit. Okay, kind of messed it up on the circle. But once I drag it the first time it gets both, then I can come back and drag individually and get the second. And so that kind of creates me this nice little arc shape with a little bit of a fillet in there. I'm going to go do the same thing on the opposite side. You're probably asking me, why don't I just leave it alone? Well, here's why. When the laser is working and it's coming around something that it's cut, cutting out, if it's got sharp angles, it stops there and sometimes overburns that one area. That's okay. That's why we're putting in these fillets so it'll continue its path. Now, notice the first time I grab them, I get both. So, yeah, that's kind of not what I want. But the second time I grab them, I get only the one I want to choose. And so I've got that. Now, you can play around with this and kind of what we call massage, you know, how this actually looks. And you can get it better, better, rounder shapes and that kind of thing. Maybe I'll take this and move it up a little bit, you know, whatever. And that gets me the shape I want. That's actually very, very small. Now, let's do Control-0, zoom out. Oh, always save your file. Control-S. And we're going to save our file. I'm going to key this in as my P sign. I forgot to save it. That's not good. We'll go ahead and rewrite over that one. And we'll save it. And we're always going to keep it as a CC file until we go to the laser. Hit OK. All right. 
Now what we need to do is we need to rotate, uh, well, actually we're going to make a copy of it. So we'll use our black arrow and we'll drag a box around that, see it? And that selected it. Now using my arrow keys, I'm going to nudge it over and down, okay? Now remember I told you what the black arrow touches is, if I hold my Alt key down, I get two. And I'm going to hold my Shift key down, I get two peace signs now direct same exact copies. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a box around uh, this first one and we're going to use our rotate command which is this guy right here it says rotate or I can key in R key in R and I'm going to click once and if you come over here and notice I'm clicked on the center of this I can rotate this around say to 315 degrees. Okay, so it slightly rotates that. I actually want to do it more now, so I'm going to do a Control Z. I'm going to say 270. I can hit this pull down and go get 270. See how it rotated it to that? Eh, I really don't want that. So let's take a look at 240. Eh, that's not too bad. Really don't want that. <laughs> so we'll come up here and you can see you can play around with this. I'm going to go to 60. That's kind of cool. Let's do it again. Let's go to 180. That's upside down. So you can just keep playing with this until you get it exactly where you want it. I'm going to go ahead and turn this to try 180 here. It's upside down. I'm going to try, let's try 90, see what I get. Okay, that's 90 degrees. Let's go to 30. That looks pretty good, actually. And I'm going to say negative 30. I'm going to goes negative here. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Okay. So now, I'm going to select this guy. Oh, also, I can turn it, as you see here. In fact, let's just play with that a little bit. That's kind of cool. So now, I'll go back to my black arrow, and I will click out here so I don't get that first one. And I'm going to do this guy here, and I'm going to see if I can turn him. Hit the rotate command. Yeah, I can turn him. I'm going to rotate him over like this. Cool. Now, let's go to our black arrow, select them both. And what we want to do now is make sure that they're on the same uh, level as far as their alignment. Now, this is off a little bit. So I come over to my alignment tool, which is here. I click on it, and now it moved them all up. That wasn't good. Okay, here's how we fix that. Control Z. Here's how we fix that. We'll take all of these objects in this one and do a Control G to group them. Come over here and do the same thing again. Control G to group it. Now we'll do Control A and select them all, and then align them. Ah, perfect. That's what we want. Let's nudge that down a little bit. Okay, so now what we want to do is going to do a Control C and a Control V. And now we've got two. Remember our rotate command? Hit that. Hold our Shift key down, and it'll rotate in 45 degree increments. Okay, now it's rotated on top, and I'm going to use my direct selection. Got them both selected. Holding my shift key and my up arrow, I'll move them up on top of each other. Perfect. A little bit more down, though, actually. Okay, it looks good. Click off here to the side. Do a control zero. I can turn off all my palettes up here that I tore off. And I can see my design. I'm happy with that. I'm going to do a control S to save it. So what we've done now is we've maximized our storage space, or actually our, our workspace on our board. So we've maximized the material we're going to use to cut out and make our project. So let's save that file, Control S to save. Now we're going to do a save as, real important step. File, save as, and we're going to leave it at that. We hit save again. It's going to come up and ask us to replace it. We'll say yes in this case, but now we're going to come down and say in Adobe Illustrator 8 file. Hit OK. Hit OK. So now we save it to an older version. Most laser engravers using RDWorks 8 V8 use the Adobe 8 uh, file format. All right, that's good. We're going to save it one more time, and we're going to export it this time. And we're going to say, uh, let me actually say save as here. I'm trying to look for a file format. Not nope, that's not the one I want. Cancel out of that. File export. And I'm going to say export as. That's what I'm looking for. Now it says AutoCAD. Let's save it as an AutoCAD interchange file known as DXF. It means I can go from one from AutoCAD into others or from Illustrator into AutoCAD. 
and also the RD Works software and the laser reads DXF files really well. Hit export and it's going to ask me what version uh, 2010 is fine scale that's perfect we'll go with that and we'll hit OK so now we've created three saved files an AT, a CC18 a Illustrator 8 and an AutoCAD DXF file that's what we want to do now we'll copy we'll go and open up our directory on our laser and we'll laser out the product